Hi, very good afternoon. I hope all of you are preparing very well for all these examinations. Two or three notifications are already out. And I'm sure you have already started firing on all cylinders. As you know, I always start uh, my sessions with a question. So the question for the day is, how is 1929 related to this session? Yes? Friends, I want to see your responses. I can see all your responses right in front of me. Very good afternoon, Ashwin. So, how is 1929 related to this session? Yes, Ashwin, others? I'm not getting any response. All right. So, let me try to answer this. This 1929 is 1929, right? I'm sorry, this marker does not seem to be working. So, let me change the marker. So, this is 1929, okay? 19th letter of the alphabet is S, second is B, and the ninth is I. State Bank of India. All right, and this is something which we are going to discuss today. Not State Bank of India, but the PO 2019 examination of State Bank of India. All right, okay. So, that is your answer. Okay, all right. We have been in touch with students and we get inquiries like when would the notification be out? Okay. The answer is we do not know. Okay. But I firmly believe in data. And if you look at the data of last five years, so in 2014, it came on 4th of April. In 2015, it came out on 13th of April. Okay. In 2016, 3rd of May. 2017, 7th of February. And 2018, 21st of April. All right. So, if we try to decipher something out of this, it's, it's probable to be out in the month of April. All right. But the answer is we do not know. But my question is why should we bother about this at this stage? If SBI notification is not out yet, all right, there are many other notifications which are already out. Like the notification of LIC, double AO is already out, or at least 80% part of preparation for most of these examinations would be the same. So, you keep firing on all the cylinders, isn't that? But if we go by data, hopefully the notification would be out in the month of April. All right. So, and there is something very important. We have, of course, analyzed the data related to notification, the date of preliminary examination, the result of the preliminary examination, and the main examination. All right. So, once you get the notification, you have close to 8 to 12 weeks for the preliminary examination, all right? Okay? And hardly a week or two after the preliminary examination, you get the result for the preliminary examination. And immediately after that result, you mostly get just 3 to 4 weeks to prepare for the main examination. So, there are two things here. There are two things here, which you must keep that in mind. That once the notification is out, you are going to get for the entire process of the preliminary and main examination, you are going to get close to 12 to 16 weeks. That is it. So, there is no reason why you should be waiting for the notification to be out. All right. The second very important thing here, which I want to discuss with you is, Please bear one thing in mind, not only that you have to clear the preliminary examination. Let's say you appear for the preliminary examination on the day of the examination, of course. And then after you are not sure whether you are going to clear that stage or not. Okay, so till the time the results are out, you will keep thinking whether I am going to clear this very first stage or not. 
and it wouldn't be possible for you to concentrate okay with all your killer instinct on the main examination okay in order to avoid that on the day of the preliminary examination the moment the examination is over you must know that you are clearing it i'll give an example like last year the cutoff was close to for general category for the preliminary examination the cutoff was close to 57 marks all right there were many people who were confident of getting around 55 okay around 55 to 60 so these people till the time the results were out Okay, good number of them, they must kept thinking about this, whether they were going to get through or not, right? So, they were not able to concentrate on the preparation for the next stage. Whereas, those people who were very clear about this, that they were going to clear the examination, right? So, they took a, uh, they took a break for a day or two and immediately started preparing for the main examination. So, it creates a huge difference. All right. Yes, Saurav Rai Chaudhary. I'd said that uh, the cutoff was around uh, 57. Okay. So, the nearest integer to 56.75 is 57. Isn't that? Okay. We have the exact data. So, no, no space for any speculation. All right. Okay. Now, this is something which uh, we all are aware of. I do not think we need to discuss this. Right. Okay. Till 2017, there was no sectional time limit. Okay. In the preliminary examination. Okay. They introduced that for the first time in 2018. But in years like 2016 and 17, there used to be sectional cutoff at preliminary stage also. Okay. Which is not the case now or which was not the case in 2018. All right, unless until we get the notification, okay, we actually cannot be very sure about this, but most probably they will continue with the structure of the examination which they had in year 2018, right? Okay, so now we have uh, the actual marks here, okay, Act actual mark sheets here, you can clearly make out. That in 2016, there were sexual cutoffs. Of course, overall cutoff had to be there. Okay. So, this is for uh, year 2017. Okay. Again, sexual cutoffs at preliminary level. Now, this is how the scene was in the year 2018. All right. So, keep all this data in mind. Okay. So, at the preliminary level, if there is no big change in the level of difficulty okay and if we were to assume a safe score so that should be around 60 probably 60 or more isn't that it can come down to 55 also of course i do not rule out the possibility okay now when it comes to the English section of this test, right? This is how the structure was in this particular test, which you might have uh, experienced either today or yesterday, okay? So, before we discuss English section or any other section, I have a question for you. How many of you spend at least 60 minutes with the National Daily on a regular basis? Please answer this question because many people believe that when we read a newspaper regularly that we do only for the purpose of working on your general awareness okay and then the belief is that uh, general awareness is not something which appears in the preliminary examination so why to bother about that at this stage there are certain things which i have to say on this so first of all nothing can be further from the fact okay those people who have to, you do not appear in this examination to clear the preliminary part or just the main part. You have to clear, you have to get selected in State Bank of India, 1929, right? Okay. So, you should have this clarity of purpose, isn't that? So, there are many advantages of reading newspapers regularly. So, make it a point to give it at least 60 minutes on an average, okay? The advantages are, 
that of course one is obvious that you work on your general awareness two you work on your reading speed okay there is uh, another myth about this reading speed people believe that reading speed is something which helps them only in reading comprehension isn't that even in your reasoning section where if you have a set of five questions or three questions you know you do this much this amount of reading aren't you so there also reading comprehension or your reading speed makes a huge difference does it okay and many things which your reading comprehension teacher shares with you like there shouldn't be any regression okay so all those things are applicable in reasoning section in fact even in quantitative aptitude section isn't that so Amdaria queen is asking me how to score more bucks in english dear queen you're already a queen okay so why do you have to get into this sbi po business but all right jokes apart one of the if you ask me one way okay if you have to do just one thing in order to improve your english i would suggest be very regular with newspapers okay and do not just read but also try to understand each and everything and when you read the editorial especially my suggestion is my suggestion is that immediately after reading the editorial try to write the pressy of that particular editorial right in 100 to 150 words that is something which works extremely well for you and this strategy works for you across the examinations whether you appear for civil service examination or bank PO examination or management examinations all right this is something which works extremely well for you and please do not forget that you have a section called descriptive writing as well in the main examination which in the overall scheme of things plays a role of uh, the extent of importance of descriptive writing is 15 percent many people will jump to this that no probably this is incorrect because only 50 out of 250 marks okay in the second stage is given to descriptive writing but please do not forget that that is scaled to a level of 75 so in the overall school of in the overall scheme of things of 100 it plays a role of 15 percent please keep that in mind so when you do something like this right it works on your descriptive writing skills as well okay all right and then when you appear for the interview in interviews in order to be confident on the day of the interview don't you think that should be uh, you should be very regular with the newspapers so in the last five to six months before the interview there shouldn't be a single day when you should miss the newspaper all right so this is important for your preliminary examination this is important for your main examination this is important for the interview as well okay so be very regular with newspapers okay now reasoning section here i have three suggestions practice practice and practice all right okay or ripu daman sharma is saying that aisa paper nahi aata jaisa ye mock dete hain okay i slightly disagree here okay we follow all the actual examinations and whatever papers we prepare okay that is on the basis of what we get to see in the actual examinations please trust on trust us on that okay all right so we shall be of course discussing a few questions also from each one of these sections okay but before that let's look at the structure of quantitative aptitude section wrong number series five questions di caselet type okay actually 15 questions and that is how it happens on uh, the actual examination also okay so let's look at the structure of this paper again and please honestly compare it with the structure of the actual examinations okay and ask this question to yourself okay whether this structure is very similar to what you get in the actual examination or not okay all right so let's move to this part now let's discuss uh, statistics statistics all related to this, this examination whatever you get to see on screen now that is a collective performance so the person who got the highest score here in this test in english okay has scored 24 here in this section okay as you can see the details that this person attempted 29 questions okay he got 25 of those right 
and uh, 4 wrong okay and a net score of 24 in my opinion is a very good score and uh, if you look at this person score in quantitative aptitude so there also that is 13 so 13 is not something which uh, i will vote for okay so i would probably expect the person to get certainly much more than 13 all right but again in reasoning this person has done very well attempted 30 questions and got all of them right isn't that so this is this slide tells you about the score of the person who scored the highest in english section of this examination all right Okay, let's move to the next one. And this is the score of Quant Topper. He attempted 26 questions, which is a good attempt, right? And out of those 26, he got 24 of them right, which is very, very good. Mohammad Arshad, I am from Bihar. यहां पे बहुत सारे लोग नहीं और कोई बिहार से है इसका मतलब यह तो बिल्कुल नहीं होता है कि उनको वॉकिंग इंग्लिश नहीं पता होती है हुँ? और जितने इंग्लिश में बोल रहा हूं इतने इंग्लिश की जरूरत तो आपको इस इम्तिहान को क्लियर करने के लिए भी होगी और मुझे बिल्कुल पता है कि इतने इंग्लिश जितनी अंग्रेजी मैं यहां बोल रहा हूं इतनी आप समझ सकते हैं लेकिन मैं फिर भी कोशिश करता हूं कि हिंदी में भी बोलूं ओके लेकिन यहां पे जो हमारे व्यूअर्स होते हैं वो सिर्फ बिहार से नहीं होते हैं देश के डिफरेंट पार्ट से होते हैं तो इसलिए मैं हिंदी इंग्लिश दोनों में बोलूंगा मैं बोल सकता हूं लेकिन आप यह समझने की कोशिश करें कि मैं आप तक पहुंच सकता हूं हिंदी बोलकर लेकिन अगर आप मेरे तक पहुंचने की कोशिश करें तो यह आपके लिए बेहतर होगा इतनी अंग्रेजी की जरूरत हर जगह होगी मैं इंग्लिश का बिल्कुल फैन नहीं हूं ठीक है लेकिन यह तो करियर की जरूरत होती है ना इतनी इंग्लिश चाहिए ही चाहिए ओके सो so, Anushri is asking this question. How could she check the result? Okay, someone from our side will certainly answer that question. Okay, all right. So here, in quantitative aptitude, the person who got the highest score is getting twenty-three point five. So it's a good score. In fact, the accuracy rate is also very good. Out of twenty-six, the person got twenty-four of the questions or the answers right. Okay, all right. So let's move to the next slide. The person who got the highest in reasoning, as you can see, is scoring 31.75. This is very good. At least I cannot manage this much in reasoning section. Okay. Oh, thank you, Devopam Banerjee. Thank you. You made my day, maybe my week, my month. All right. So 31.75 is an absolutely great score in reasoning okay so please keep one thing in mind that here if i look at the score of this person so this person is very good at reasoning needless to say some a few thousand people they appeared for this test and getting the highest score okay in any of the sections or even overall right is not a small thing so this person is very good at reasoning and is certainly even okay type at english and quantitative aptitude but for this person, intentionally, we do not name such people who get such scores in these in our tests. Uh, this person definitely needs to push himself in case of English at least. Because please do not forget that you have your main examination as well. No one, no one gets into this process just in order to clear the preliminary examination. The purpose is to work as an officer, State Bank of India, maybe some other bank. Okay, Janu Janu, first of all, I think you should have a proper name as I speak your name, but that is not your actual name, okay. So, uh, that makes me slightly uncomfortable, Janu Janu. So, uh, the most important thing is that read a lot in English, read a lot in English, okay. All right, so, now the person who has scored the highest marks overall, is incidentally the person who has scored overall in English. All right, so please keep that in mind. And I somehow believe that in those 20 minutes, in those 20 minutes, because in the preliminary stage, you get just 20 minutes for each of the sections. If they do not uh, do away with the sexual time limits this year in 2019, that it would come to know only when the notification is out, right? So, which one is the section where you can score the highest? So, I was discussing this thing with my colleagues here at grade up 
okay so many of them they are great experts they have cleared this examination on multiple occasions right so i got a very mixed response a lady who is very good at reasoning she told me that uh, probably you can score your highest in reasoning but when i looked at data so uh, some data supported her claim some data did not even support her claim okay so i would not decide it for you but you must know your fifth bowler cricket ka season hai okay so mostly five bowlers they bowl in one day cricket okay so mostly good batsmen they try to save their wicket okay on the strike bowlers of the opposition okay and conserve their energy and wicket for the fifth bowler they wait for the fifth bowler so of these three bowlers which you get in the examination english quantitative aptitude and reasoning you have to first of all decide your fifth bowler okay the area where you can score very easily and you must score very heavily there okay we must identify our area first of all but having said this you might be having your favorite section but you have to be reasonably good at each one of the three sections do I make sense to you? Do I? Okay. So let's move to the next slide. So here is for a purpose. I want to discuss this. In fact, my colleague Vikram, when he gave this slide to me, so I told him that why do we have to even discuss this? Then he came with this idea that this should be discussed so that people avoid doing this. Okay. This is a mock test. Whatever we offer you on our app, or uh, I do not know where do you do these tests. You might be doing, you might be using your uh, laptop. Okay. So, what is the purpose of taking a mock test? This is a simulation exercise. जो actual examination में मुझे करना है एक घंटे में मुझे 20-20 minutes मिलेंगे हर एक section के लिए, right? तो उसको मैं यहाँ पे practice करता हूँ. इसको सिमुलेशन एक्सरसाइज बोलते हैं ठीक है वी सिमुलेट टेस्ट कंडीशंस फॉर यू हियर ताकि आप उसमें प्रैक्टिस कर सके ऑल राइट इन ऑर्डर टू प्रिपेयर योरसेल्फ फॉर द एक्चुअल एग्जामिनेशन इजंट दैट यू मस्ट बी नोइंग दैट व्हेनेवर इंडिया इंडियन क्रिकेट टीम इट ट्रैवल्स टू ऑस्ट्रेलिया ओके सो देयर प्रैक्टिस इज वेरी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द वे इंडियन क्रिकेट टीम विल प्रिपेयर for the matches when Australia visits us, all right, as is the case now, okay. So, here you are preparing for an examination. In the examination, ultimately, you have to attempt all three sections in 20 minutes, okay. So, why do you make mockery of a mock test by spoiling one section completely? Look at the scorecard of this person. He attempted English section, okay, sincerely. Same was the case with reasoning, okay, though I tend to, this is a very good score if he genuinely scored this or she, I do not know, okay. But what about quantitative aptitude? The person did not even attempt a single question in quantitative aptitude. This is actually almost spoiling a test for you. Why do you do that? We offer you some 60, 70 tests, okay. So, you should probably make the best out of each one of these tests. Each and every such test should be a serious affair. Each and every session should be a serious affair, isn't that? So, please do not do this. Okay, all right. Now we shall be discussing a few questions. Okay, we shall keep most of the things short. Okay, so based on this much of data which you see on your screen right now, okay, don't you worry, I'm not going to solve all the questions here. Okay, so when you get this much of data, so luckily. This data is followed by five questions. Okay. So, one piece of suggestion for you that very soon we should be able to identify whether you are going to crack this set or not. This happens in reasoning, not much in English, okay, because mostly you get independent questions, okay. But reasoning, in reasoning and in quantitative aptitude, you should be able to decide very fast. Bohat jaldi apko ye fasla lena hoga ki apko set ko. करना चाहिए या नहीं करना चाहिए उसमें टाइम इन्वेस्ट करना चाहिए या नहीं करना चाहिए ओके जब भी मैं किसी टेस्ट के एनालिसिस लेता हूं व्हेनेवर आई हैव टू एनालाइज अ टेस्ट ओके आई मेक इट अ पॉइंट टू डू द टेस्ट ओके विद टाइम लिमिट्स आई फील दैट दिस वाज एन इजी सेट ओके 
Soundarya is again asking, is mock test enough for prelims? Soundarya, we actually do not know what actually is enough, but we believe that if you attend all our sessions, if you attend all our sessions, okay, you practice well from our test series or tests which we make available to you, okay, that should certainly be more than adequate, okay. So, coming back to this, first, you should be able to decide very fast in, in case of group questions, be it quantitative aptitude, okay, or reasoning. You do not get into such situations, luckily, in the English section. There, of course, maybe uh, for limited purpose of reading comprehension, if you feel that you are just not comfortable with the passage which you are getting, you may avoid it as well, at least at the preliminary level, okay. But anyway, coming back to this question, so here... To me, this set was simple and my intention of putting the first question is something else. If you read towards the bottom, if you read towards the bottom of uh, the passage, the given information which you have here, this is said that he marked article D at 40% above the cost price. So, he marked D, let's say cost price was X, okay, the mark price would be 1.4x, 40% above the cost price, right? And then you have options. The question is, what is the marked price of article D? And then you have options like 1700, 1750, 1800, 1850, and unfortunately, none of these. Okay, none of these. Uh, please do not mind the handwriting. Now, I, I do not see any scope for any improvement here on uh, discount at least, okay? So, these are the options. I do not intend to discuss the entire set as I told you, okay, but try to observe something and such observations help you a lot, okay. The observation is that x will have some value and ultimately your answer would be 1.4 times x. This 1.4 is a multiple of 7, okay. So there is a very good chance, close to 100% chance that the answer option would be a multiple of 7. Okay, what I'm trying to tell you, if the CP is 1000, your mark price would be 1400, is it a multiple of 7? Even if I put, let's say something like 2000 or 1500 here, so 7 will certainly be a factor here, isn't that? So, among these options, this is not a multiple of 7, this is certainly not a multiple of 7, this is not a multiple of 7, this is a multiple of 7. So, in an examination, especially in prelims, Let's say that you have attempted good number of questions and you are not able to attempt this entire set and you just happen to read this much or you just happen to read the set but you do not have time to solve it. So, in such questions with some observations, you can take, okay, a bit of a bet and in, on more than 90% occasions when you take such bets, you actually succeed, you get the right answer. And here, this is not risky or rather this is risky because one of the options is none of these. So, this none of these is a killjoy for you, okay? Please refer to the dictionary if you already do not know the meaning of killjoy. Many people have been asking me that how to improve English. The best way of improving English is reading regularly and whenever you come across any unfamiliar word, idea, okay? Make sure, make sure that you get to know the meaning, the answer, all right? You have Google when I was your age. I mostly did not have Google. I got Google for the first time or I used Google for the first time when I was 22 years of age. Okay, you have this Google support probably before you were born. You have had this Google support, right? Even before you were born. Okay, most of you. So, here straight away if someone marks 1750, okay, it would be a very good guess. Here, incidentally, the answer also is 1750. So, please keep such things in mind that what is a multiple of what, what is a factor of what and stuff like this. Okay. All right. Here, how many of you, right, got the right answer to this question? Yes, friends. How many of you got the right answer to this question? And there is something special about wrong number series, right? Or any series or sequence questions. Technically, this is not a series. This is a sequence, okay? So, I will certainly do the sequence question for you, okay? But before that, keep one thing in mind. 
that certain sequence questions can actually prove to be a killjoy, okay? Because here, you can never probably be an expert. Of course, you should practice as much as possible, okay? But there is always a chance of you getting stuck with a question. So, here you must know your limit. If you are not able to crack it, in probably 20, 30 seconds, 35 seconds, move on. Just move on. Ashwin Avinash is getting the right answer. He is getting 22. So, let us see how Ashwin got 22. So, of course, we have this. 11, 12, 14, 22, 44, and 164. And keep one thing in mind, keep one thing in mind, that reading and practice, okay, help you everywhere. So, here the difference between 11 and 12 is 1, between 12 and 14 is 2, right. This is 8, this is 22, and here this is how much is this? 120. Okay. So, here the moment I see something like this, okay, when I look at something like this, some patterns should come to my mind. 1, 2, 8, I do not know. So, this initially gives you the feeling of 2 to the power 0, right? 2 to the power 1, 2 cube, but then these are not parts of 2. So, rule that out. Okay. Then, 1, 2, 8, 22, 120 and mind you, here, if one of the numbers is wrong, okay, that will impact two of the numbers here, when we take the first stage difference, isn't that? So, but 1, 2, especially when I look at 120, this is 5 factorial, right? 2 is 2 factorial, this is 1 factorial. So, should we have 3 factorial here, then 4 factorial, okay? So, if the differences are, one factorial, two factorial, three factorial, four factorial and five factorial, right? I will get the right answer, okay? And what is the right answer? 14 plus 6, 14 plus 6, 20, 20 plus 24, 44, all right? Any doubt? Okay, and please keep one thing in mind. That the moment you see a number like 120, okay, this should come to your mind that this is factorial 5, this should come to your mind that this is 15 into 8, right, this should come to your mind this is 80 into 1.5, this also should come to your mind this is 150 into 0.8, okay, all these things should happen very fast in your mind, all these reactions should be natural reactions and I will tell you why and how does it help you. So, 150 into 0.8 is 120. So, this means what? On 150, if I give a discount of 20%, it becomes 120, right? Similarly, if 80 is increased by 50%, that becomes 120, isn't that? 15 into 8, 4, 5 factorial. So, with most of the numbers, you should have this level of familiarity, okay? And take my word for it. If you look at all the numbers which appear in these examinations, the sum total of such numbers or probably those numbers which are used in these examinations very frequently will not be, the number of such numbers will certainly not be above 100. There are numbers which keep appearing in the examination in some form, isn't that? Okay. Thank you, Ankit Saad. I am not sure if I can pronounce your name. I am very weak at that anyway. So, because in my mother tongue, Mathali, we do not have hard sounds. Okay, so whether it's Saad or Saad, I do not know. But okay, thank you. All right. Is that okay? So, let's move to the next question. Now, here, there's a good question of data sufficiency. All right. And in this data sufficiency question, first of all, keep one thing in mind that if you get five such questions in the examination, we mostly observe, we here at grade up observe that usually three questions are very simple, usually, okay. So, we certainly cannot find a perfect pattern here, okay. But people do not attempt these questions because they somehow believe that they have to read a lot. 
you do not have to read here on every slide we have put the instructions also but in the examination thanks Ankit in the actual examination you wouldn't be reading all the instructions again and again though there is one school of thought which says that very fast you should actually read all the instructions also because at times quite possible that instructions are different for three DS questions okay and different for the remaining two that also happens this has happened with me in one of the examinations so we need to be very 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 particular about this but at the same time we should be able to read instructions very fast and we should practice reading all different kinds of instructions in data sufficiency and in fact we shall make you practice a few surprises in case of data sufficiency yes one more thing the surprise word reminds me of another thing we have created a program for you which in intention we have tried to make shock proof sh surprise proof the reason is that in most of our tests in our classes okay we shall take you through so many surprises and shocks so that in the actual examination if something like that comes up okay you won't be surprised shouldn't be surprised if you are sincere if you are not sincere, right, then it doesn't make a difference anyway. Okay, so the moral of the story is that in case of data sufficiency, you should be able, you should read the instructions carefully because those instructions could be different from what you are habituated of. But at, as far as grade up is concerned, we would not allow you to settle with any particular kind of instructions in data sufficiency. Okay, but you should be able to read instructions very fast. Okay, look here. Here, of course. Deepika Chaudhary, SBI, PO, kab aega? Uh, unfortunately, we are poor at clairvoyance. We do not know. Okay. I wish I could answer your question. But when we look at the data, that is something we, which we discussed initially. If we look at the data, most probably the notification should be out in the month of April. Most probably. That is what the pattern suggests. Because in the last five years, on three occasions, the notification came out in the month of April. Okay. And hence this conclusion. All right. So, coming back to this question. If you, the parent information just tells you that the shopkeeper sold an article at certain discount. What was the discount percentage given by the shopkeeper? It's a very usual question. Okay. So, the first statement tells you the shopkeeper had uh, bought the article at 2100 and marked the article 40% 40, 40 above the cost price. So, 2100 was the cost price and 2100 into 1 1.4, right, was the marked price. Then he gave some discount also. Then another statement says that if the shopkeeper would have sold the article at 4% more, the profit would have been 84 more. So, the last part of the statement, right, is superfluous. वो तो superfluous है ना उसका कोई मतलब ही नहीं है वो तो वैसे ही if the cost price is 2100 okay and your percentage profit point goes up by 4 okay so you will be making 4% uh, of 2100 more which is 84 what I am trying to say that if you make 10% profit on 2100 right you would be making 210 if you make 14% profit, if you make 14% profit, right, you would be making 210, which is 10% of 2100, plus 4% of 2100, which is 84, and in place of 10, if I put X, Y, Z, anything, okay, that, that is a universal fact, isn't that? Yes, Ankit, good, Ankit has just given you a good synonym of uh, superfluous, good. Okay, so even when we take sessions, we faculty members, we take sessions here and we use a word which are not very familiar with, okay. So, uh, Google immediately, alright, use your phone, oh no, that means you will start using your phone for other purposes also while attending our sessions, do not do that, okay. So, the first statement will certainly not give you the answer, right, when I look at the second statement here. When I look at the second statement here, so this says, if a discount of 294 would have been given by the shopkeeper, then he would have earned 294 more. And mind you, the marked price is 2940, okay? So, 
this is very clearly said that had he given a discount of only 294 he would have earned two he, he would have made a profit of 294 more which means earlier he had given a discount of 294 plus 294 right 294 plus 294 and now he is giving a discount of only 294 okay so he is certainly making 294 more all right okay so and this is so earlier he was giving 20 percent discount and now he is giving 10 percent discount okay so this answers your question all right okay so let's come to the next one so first of all look at this question and try to solve it tell me the answer in the meantime i will clean this board this again to me was a very simple question Riti gupta please work on your basics on basics of percentages, mark price, cost price, right? The such questions would not appear to be complicated to you. All right. Okay. Amit Ranjan Mishra, point well taken. We'll try to, okay, move a bit faster. Don't worry. So, here in this question, this is clear that a car is moving behind, car A is moving behind car B in the same direction and the distance between them initially is 40 kilometers. So, car A, car B, both of them, are moving in this direction right and here this also is given that car a is behind and the distance between them is 40 kilometers okay distance between a cars a and b is 40 kilometers okay all right and there is one more piece of information that is speed of car b is 50 kilometer per hour so speed of car b is 50 kilometer per hour okay all right now how long would car a take to overtake car b all right the first statement tells me the st uh, the time taken by car b i think there's a typo there right sorry so time taken by car b to cover a distance of 200 kilometer is four hours this is again superfluous this is redundant this is redundant why because if time taken by car b to cover a distance of 200 kilometers is 4 hours so speed of car b is 50 kilometer per hour which anyway is given which is already given initially so statement 1 does not give me any information okay let's look at 2 amit ranjan mishra it cannot be either 1 or 2 okay because the first statement does not give you any statement right the statement 1 does not give you any information whatever information you get there that is already there in the parent question okay now let's look at the second statement the second statement says if the cars were moving in the opposite directions towards each other the relative speed of car a with respect to car b would have been 120 kilometers okay i know this is a very simple question okay but there's a purpose why i'm discussing this so had they been moving in opposite directions the relative speed of these two cars would have been 120 km per hour. The speed of this, we already know 50 km per hour, right? And we know that when two cars, they move towards each other, okay, the relative speed is actually sum of the speeds. Okay. Yaar, main ye questions bahut dino se karta nahi hu ab. Thik hai? To jahan pe agar main galat karu, to mujhe bata denge aap. Okay? All right. So, if this is 50, this has to be 70 km per hour. So, using the second statement, you get the information, okay, about the speed of car A. So, if this is 50 km per hour, this is 70 km per hour. And if they are moving in the same direction, the relative speed of A, okay, with respect to car B, it will be 20 km per hour. The distance between them is 40, okay. So, of course, car A will take 2 hours. And I am discussing all this that car A will take 2 hours but that is not something which you have to do in the examination. The moment you realize that with help of a particular statement or both the statements you are going to get the answer, you are sure about this, do not try to get the answer. Okay? That is wastage of time. You just have to ensure that yes, I can get the answer. Okay? If you actually start getting the answer, 
okay then you are wasting your time so the moment you realize that you are going to get the answer right uh, please uh, mark your answer accordingly but here i have a question in the first statement which is given here the time taken by car b to cover a distance of 200 km is 4 hours in place of b like here you have b okay oh god it's slightly difficult for me to mark this okay uh, uh, yes here in place of car b if i put car a if this i make car a what will be the answer then my question is in place of car b in the first statement okay if i replace the letter a by b capital b okay what will be the answer then and please do it fast please do it fast yes friends ridhi gupta is saying either okay and as someone has asked me to move very fast in fact my colleague uh, vikram also wanted me to move very fast something which i'm not habituated of doing all right the answer is either one or two i'm very happy that nidhi kumari dilip kumar shivam not shivam and many others okay are getting either one or two either one or two will be the answer we have already seen that with help of the second statement we could get the answer okay now we can get the answer with help of the first statement also okay and how jitu yeah the first is not given any extra key of the answer i do not understand what you're trying to say okay but if you're trying to say that the given answer is different from what i'm discussing here okay that is right because i've changed the question in the first statement i put a in place of b okay please keep that in mind in fact which is why i am discussing this question so now if speed of speeds of both the cars is 50 km per hour okay the question is when will car a overtake car b the answer is never so even using the first statement you can get the answer using the first statement you get the answer never and please keep that in mind that never is also an answer here the answer is cannot be determined you can determine the answer using the first statement and the answer is never if both of them are moving in the same direction at same speeds okay or at the same speed so car a will never overtake car b so first statement also gives you the answer okay so this is something which we mean by preparing you for surprises okay you also we cannot teach you probably even 50 percent of the things okay which may appear in the examination all right but the idea is whatever you learn from us okay or whatever you learn on your own also please do lots of experimentations keep asking yourself what if this question is not like this this question is like this how would i do it all right okay so it's well settled that the answer will then be either one or two but in the current form which you got in the examination the answer would be using only statement two all right let's move forward here i'm not going to discuss this entire question with you the question which you see i'll clear this as well so yes but the idea is my question to you is that when you read this you create equations a b c d right i'm very thankful to the person who created this question because luckily the initial letters are a b c d okay so my question to you is that how many independent equations do you get here while doing this question okay and this piece of information will help you all the time take my word for it okay so my question to you is that how many independent equations do you get here and how many variables are there both In question 5, which is on your screen, okay, how many equations are there and how many variables are there? I am not asking what is the answer to this question, Nidhi Kumari and K. Okay, my question is that how many equations are there and how many variables are there? Again, 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 Nidhi, Shivam, Naresh Shukla ji. 
मैं आपसे ये पूछ ही नहीं रहा हूं कि सवाल का जवाब क्या है ओके वो तो मैं डिस्कस कर रहा हूंगा आपसे राहुल इज प्रॉब्ली मेकिंग सेंस मेरा दो सवाल है आपसे इस सवाल में वेरिएबल्स कितने हैं इक्वेशन कितने इक्वेशन कितने वेरिएबल कितने हैं इन दैट ऑर्डर ओके प्लीज कीप वन थिंग इन माइंड यू माइट हैव स्टडीड दिस प्रोबेबली इन क्लास एट अलजिब्रा ओके दैट in order to solve a system of equations with n variables in order to solve a system of equations with n variables okay exactly n equations are needed exactly n equations are needed how many variables are here here there are four variables a b c and d a b c and d So number of variables four and how many independent equations do we have what do i mean by independent equation please try to understand the first statement says that the average height of uh, chirag and dinesh is 150 cm while the average height of all four persons is 158 so if average height of all four persons is 158 so we have a plus b plus c plus d is equal to 158 into 4 which is 632 This 158 into 4 is 632 should come to. You don't have to calculate these things. You do not have to put pen or pencil on paper in order to get do these sums. 150 into 4 is 600. 80 into 4 is 32. All right, and should happen in a nanosecond in your mind. Okay, so a plus b plus c plus d is 632. That is the first information. The second information is average height of Chirag and Dinesh is 150. All right, so Chirag and Dinesh, c plus d is how much? C plus d is 300 look at the second statement the average height of amit and dinesh is equal to the average height of bhuvan and chirag okay which means that a plus d is equal to b plus c is equal to how much half of 632 of course it would be so half of 632 would be 316 so please keep one thing in mind that here you do not have four equations Okay, here you do not have four equations. You have only three independent equations. This is equation number one. This is equation number two, and you do not have two equations. If you have just this or even this, the other one will come out of this, isn't that? So you have only three equations here and not four. So four variables, but only three equations. Okay, so you cannot get the value. or you cannot get value you cannot get the value of all the four variables okay all right so please keep this in mind so here of course the answer would be uh the data even both statements one and two together are not sufficient to answer the question right okay what about this question i probably would not be able to all the things which i intend to discuss with you okay so i have limited time now and in fact uh, lags are also being raised okay so this again was a very doable set very very doable set isn't that you just had to keep one thing in mind that many people are uh, looking at the all possible mistakes which people can commit right while doing this test and the problem is that many people must have forgotten here on the graph they see investments of three people only okay people forget to figure in bechara sanket okay sanket ka sanket silent mode pe tha so people didn't hear him out sanket also had to be factored in two that is the only big mistake which you can commit here all right okay then i think but the easiest the lowest hanging fruit in quantitative aptitude section was the set on pie chart you remember can you get anything easier than that suman sahib is asking how to improve di section so suman sahib please keep one thing in mind that your ability in di is a function of two or three very important things first of all you should be good at arithmetic okay you should have very good understanding of all the chapters of arithmetic 
टू यू शुड बी गुड विथ कैलकुलेशन जितेंद्र जितेंद्र सरीन टू का सेशन ऑन फास्ट कैलकुलेशन ये ओके आई बिलीव इट वॉज वॉडरफुल सेशन सो डिड यू पीपल अटेंड द सेशन प्लीज डो नॉट मिस अ सिंगल सेशन एनी वेयर और राइट यू शुड नॉट बी मिसिंग आउट ऑन सच वॉडरफुल सेशन टेकन बाय ग्रेड अप ओके सो लेट्स मूव टू दिस इन फैक्ट हियर अगेन आई नो that there are many videos and many of your uh, faculty members who keep talking about all the shortcuts right which might be applied to most of the types of questions so here also mostly people say that in both the equations in the first as well as second the product of the roots is positive in both the cases the sum of the roots is also positive in both the cases so in case 1 also both the roots are positive in case 2 also both the roots are positive that is something which you are told okay so that is just one of the things there is a famous saying that common sense is not common at all so those people okay who do not apply a bit of common sense here they will end up solving the second equation also which is not needed that is all that i need to say all right when i look at the first equation 19.8 19.8 x square there's a typo here this is x square which all of you know right minus 82.5x okay plus 82.5 is 0 and look here of course all these numbers then you should be able to scan these numbers these patterns very fast in the actual examination right so here the first observation should be that all these numbers are multiples of 11 right so uh, take out 11 from here uh, first of all multiply everything with 10 so this becomes 198 x square minus 825 x plus 825 okay then take out 11 here so this becomes 18 x square minus 7 times okay and 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 and, and 5 75 x plus 75 okay so when you solve this you get two roots 5 by 2 and 5 by 3. When you solve this, you get two roots. 5 by 2 and 5 by 3. Is that okay? In the second equation, what is the sum of the roots? First of all, of course, we are all aware of this. That sum of the roots, both the roots are positive. And what is the sum of the roots? The sum of the roots would be 41.6 divided by 39. So, both the roots are positive. And their sum is 41.6 divided by 39. And this 41.6 divided by 39 is less than even 1.1. So, even sum of the roots in the second case, the sum of the roots of the second equation is less than 1.1. And both the roots are positive. So, each one of the roots must be smaller than even the smaller root of the first equation. So, straight away you can say that x is greater than y. You do not have to solve the second equation. Is that okay? These small, small things you have to keep making a mental note of. All right. Okay. So let's move to the next question now. How many of you were able to do it in less than 30 seconds? Yes, friends. Hi, Lakshya Vijay. So at least half your name is one third of my name. Good. So you are my 33.33 percent namesake. Yeah. So here, how many of you actually solve this question in less than 30 seconds? And I know, I know the blunder which people commit here while doing this question. Okay. In fact, here we should have put one of the options as eight. Right, to make the life slightly difficult for you. Okay. Okay, let's see this. Let's see this. Sum of two numbers is 128 and their HCF is 8. Oh, we have outstanding stars also here. But what are people saying? This 2 Balaji or outstanding star, what do you mean by this 2? Is 2 the answer? 
sum of two numbers is 128 that hcf is 8 how many numbers of how many basically is not number of pairs Achha, how many numbers of pairs will satisfy the condition all right that's okay so if hcf of two numbers is 8 right each one of the numbers will be a multiple of 8 isn't that jitu yadav outstanding star balaji 2 is not the answer Nidhi Kumari, first option, 2 is not the answer. Okay. So, sum of two numbers is 128, that HCF is 8. Agar do numbers ka HCF 8 hai, to dono number 8 ke multiple honge. Okay. So, let's say the numbers are 8A and 8B. Okay. Where A and B are integers. Asa hi hota hai na? Do numbers ka HCF 8 hai, to 8 to dono ka factor hai na? Dono me hi aega 8. Okay. But 8A plus 8B is given as 128, which means A plus B is given as, if you take out 8, this becomes 16. And here also you do not have to start dividing 128 by 8. Okay, in a fraction of second, in a fraction of nanosecond, it should come to your mind that 16 into 8 is 128. Okay, Rahul Kumar Shah says that the answer is 4. Riddhi Gupta also is getting 4. Okay, 4 is the right answer. Good. So, if 8 and 8b are the numbers, their sum is 128, we ultimately get a plus b as 16. So, kya hoga? And both the numbers, of course, have to be, a and b both have to be positive integers. You can get 115, 2 and 14, right, 3 and 13, like this. So, many people, many people here, and the last one would be 8 and 8. So, many people here initially thought, okay, that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, okay, and of course, here they are not talking about ordered pairs. Here also, you need to be extremely careful. So, if people talk about ordered pairs of numbers, 1, 2 becomes different from 2, 1. I guess that in bank PO examination, they will not talk about ordered pair. Here, simply they are talking about pair. So, you do not have to get confused here. So, when we talk about a pair, 1, 2, right is equal to 2 1 but when we talk about ordered pairs these two are different please keep that in mind okay forget that so here there is a problem if we think that these are the eight pairs there is a problem check out with this if 2 and 14 if the pair of 2 and 14 is one such pair right your numbers would be 16 right and 8 into 14 112 but the problem is that of 16 and 112, now HCF does not remain 8. The HCF becomes, for this pair, the HCF becomes how much? 16 itself. Okay. So, please keep that in mind. That if there are two numbers with HCF 8, the numbers would be 8A and 8B. But there cannot be any further factors between A and B. So, A and B will always be co-prime. So, all these cases where you get 214. 4, 12, 8, 8, all of them will go and there would be 4 pairs, 1, 15, 3, 13, 5, 11 and 7, 9, 1 and 15 they are co-prime to each other. What do I mean when I say that a pair of numbers is co-prime to each other? Their HCF is 1, all right, okay, so let's move to the next one. So, here in a quiz competition involving some boys and girls of a school, every student had to play or whatever, okay. So, in my opinion, this is some very simple and basic application of permutation combination, all right. This much of permutation combination appears in even clerical competitions, clerical competitions these days, okay. And here we are pre preparing for bank PO examinations, okay. So, you should certainly be prepared for at least this much of permutation combination, no? Okay. So, some boys and some girls of a school, every student had to play exactly one game with every other student, all right. It was found that in 45 games, both the players were girls. So, in most of these questions, okay, we are insensitive to the third gender, okay. And even the Supreme Court of India, and in fact, 
when you uh, fill the form of even bank PO examinations, keep that in mind that now this is mandatory for them to talk about the third gender as well. Okay, but unfortunately, this sensitivity is yet to creep in. Okay, in the bodies which prepare the question. So for you, unless until anything is given, there are only two genders. Okay, male and female. Please keep that in mind. No offenses meant here. Okay, all right. So in a quiz competition involving some boys and girls. Every student had to play exactly with every other student and there were 45 games which were played, right. Uh, okay, both the players were girls, so here there were 45 games, okay. And here in case of boys, there were 190 games. So if there were, let's say, N boys and M girls, okay. So if there are N boys, and all of them, they play each other just once. What will be the total number of games? NC2. And here it would be MC2. And NC2 is given as 190. What is the value of NC2? N into N minus 1 divided by 2. That is 190. Okay. So, of course, your N has to be 20. Similarly, here, your M has to be 10. As I was talking about your familiarity, not only with words in English, but also with certain numbers, certain expressions, please bear one thing in mind. That 10 C2 is 45 and 9 C2 is 36, okay, or 8 C2 is 28, okay, all these things should be right in front of your mind, not even at the back of your mind, by default, okay. Similarly, when you see N C2 is 190, in a fraction of second, it should come to your mind. In a fraction of second, it should come to your mind. The 20 C2 would be 190. So, number of boys is 20 and number of girls is 10. So, the matches involving one boy and one girl would be 20 into 10, 200. Clear? Any question? Comfortable? Okay. So, let's move to the next one then. Uh, rather than doing this question, okay, let me move to some questions in English and reasoning as well, okay. Let's forget this also. Baljeet Kaur is asking me if I could explain why NC2, okay. All right. So, first of all, the meaning of NC2, Baljeet, I will try to do it very fast because I am running out of time or rather I have already run out of time. Okay. So, let us say there are five people. A, B, C, D and E. Okay. And these five people, among these five people, everyone has to play a match, right, against the rest of the players. So, there would be a match between A, B, okay, then A, C, then A, D and A, E. Now, B will also be playing with A, C, D and E, okay, but A, B we have already tried, okay. So, B, C, B, D and B, E, okay. Similarly, for C, C, D and C, E, for D, D and E, please do not think that I have not included D, A because D, A has already been taken into account. So, total number of matches would be 4 plus 3 plus 2, plus 1, that is 10, okay. So, here, if there are n people, every person would be playing with exactly one match with rest of the players. So, one particular player will be playing the match with each of the n minus 1 people, okay. But in this process, everything will get, count, get counted twice. Like here, if I think about a, b, a, B, C, D and E. A will play a match with B, C, D and E. Similarly, B will play with A, C, D and E. But A, B and B, A, they are one and the same thing. Similarly, everything will get repeated. Okay. Mohit Sinha ji, this question ka mein bahut bar jawab de chuka hoon ki itne English toh samaj pehani chahiye. Okay. So, yes. So, which is why we then divide N into N minus 1 by 2, we divide n into n minus 1 by 2 and padhe likhe log wo n into n minus 1 divided by 2 ko nc2 bolte, that is it. 
okay so that is about uh, why the why why did i use nc2 okay but i expect each one of you one more thing which we have decided we are soon going to launch our program in fact in a way we have already launched it and which is why i'm here okay speaking with you so hamari aap se ek ummeed hai ki hamare sessions attend karne ke pehle aap apne basics pe mehnat karke aaiye ओके प्रदीप तिवारी ज्योति रानी ज्योति रानी जी वेरी गुड इवनिंग ओके बिल्कुल मेहनत करके आइए ताकि हम जो चीजें आपके साथ डिस्कस करना चाहते हैं जितने टाइम में उतने ही टाइम में डिस्कस कर पाए अदरवाइज दिस बिकम स्लाइटली एंडलेस एंड इफ यू वर्क वेरी हार्ड बिफोर अटेंडिंग द सेशन इज ऑलवेज गुड एंड फॉर मोस्ट ऑफ अवर सेशन ओके ट्राई टू आस्क दिस क्वेश्चन टू योर सेल्फ दैट वट एग्जैक्टली शुड बी द प्री रिक्वेजेट क्या क्या आना चाहिए और राइट ओके so let me skip questions 10 and 11 and let me try to probably have 5 minutes now okay so let me try to do certain questions in english also so how was this section this time for you english how did you do yes friends then the banerjee is asking what should we practice regularly to improve lr and di I have a fear of lr di in both cat level and po level but i'm reasonably confident in quant okay so first of all uh, i see a bit of co contradiction here okay most of the people are good at quantitative aptitude most of the people are good at quantitative aptitude they are good at lr di okay and the key to success in alert uh, dilr banerji is that first of all most of the fears are baseless academic fears are baseless at least okay so put the fear aside and practice lots of dilr attend our sessions okay develop a scientific way of approaching them all right i, I know i've given you a global answer but unfortunately this global answer is correct that is the only way of improving your dilr skills how many minutes do i have a uh, five minutes my friend is telling me ravi is telling me okay is proving to be the villain that i have five minutes all right so uh, here you had a few questions on grammar here and again i expect most of you to attend our sessions on grammar and vocabulary with a bit of preparation okay if i look at column 1 the first line is the number of people lined up okay so i think it can only be combined with the number of people lined up for tickets was 400 what are the this this line is absolutely okay okay but many people will believe that your subject is plural okay uh, before i come to this that why many people will think that the subject is plural okay let's try to understand one thing something about singular and plural do not get surprised okay i'm not going to teach you ox and oxen okay we have to follow british english okay we have to follow british english okay most of you on many sites and probably the language which you use these days okay that is not only informal that is casual almost all right but please keep that in mind that here in all these examinations all the examinations in india the english which we follow is british which is a very formal language okay so in british english singular is person and plural is people okay so we also take a bit of liberty we also take a bit of liberty while taking these sessions okay so i did something here and probably okay okay so up to change this pen so singular is person and plural plural is people in american english the plural is persons all right so please take care of this one two that people itself is plural but yet in places you will see peoples as well which means which conveys a slightly different meaning person singular people plural peoples can also be used 
and that is absolutely correct so only because you are aware of this that people is plural and you see people somewhere so i remember probably one ncrt book when i was in study eight or nine india okay hyphen lands and peoples probably even now the same name continues okay which is absolutely all right what they mean at times that people in plural from many different parts that becomes peoples okay so this is one of very few words one of very few words okay where there's a plural or plural also which is why i talked about this but persons is not accepted in standard british english keep that in mind all right Achha, this much on just one question sorry so come to the question so many people will believe that the number of people since they know that people is plural they will believe that the number of people is plural but please not commit this blunder here the subject is number so number of people is a singular subject so number of people who lined up for tickets was 400 all right and another thing 200 is not much okay we do not say 200 are not much 200 is not much collectively okay still singular please keep that in mind so anyway so the number of people lined up for tickets was 400 that's absolutely okay now the second statement says he's one of those managers who favor increasing the stuff okay all right another rule okay about which i keep shouting at the top of my voice and many people they commit blunders here whenever i say whenever i say one of one of the whatever it will always precede plural okay it cannot be one of the word it cannot be one of the word it has to be one of the words okay one of the people all right this is one of those managers we cannot say one of the manager all right those managers who favor increasing the staff all right there is some problem with the third one i won't pay unless so there is always a negative you cannot go for double negative here you do not provide the goods immediately i won't play unless you provide the goods immediately that is what the standard structure is all right so here with one question in fact you can learn so very much about grammar about construction of sentences all right but british english no us english okay all right So now probably I have just one minute. I'm extremely sorry. Will request my friends here at Grade Up to give me another opportunity for continuing with the same session, right? If you also desire so. So let me stop here. Okay. So please be very regular with reading. Okay. Especially newspapers and some fictions, non-fictions as well. Keep practicing for the examination or examinations, should I say? All right. All the best.